How to take a boudoir selfie. Sending somebody a sultry selfie, that's a lot of S's, can be both really fun for you and for the person receiving the photo. But it can also feel really stressful when it's not turning out the way that you want. I'll give you my four best tips for taking phenomenal boudoir selfies and making the process really, really easy for you. And the third one is the most important, so do not check out early. It's showtime. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd, and I've been a professional photographer for 12 years. I've been doing boudoir for seven of those, and I have photographed thousands of people. I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on what makes a great boudoir photo. And you can do it yourself, even without hiring me. You should still hire me, but you can totally do boudoir selfies at home. And my four-step process for taking much better boudoir selfies at home. First, pick the right setting. Two, pick the right outfit. Three, getting the right light, and four, nailing the perfect pose. All right, so let's talk about setting. What is the right setting? You're like, well, it's a boudoir photo. I should be in bed. Wrong. Yes, boudoir means bedroom, but you can take a boudoir photo anywhere. Just like there is no dress code, boudoir is a mindset. It also doesn't require a specific location. You could do boudoir photos in any room of the house. You don't even have to be in the house. You could be outdoors somewhere. So you could take a boudoir photo in the bathroom, in the shower. You could take it in the kitchen, on the kitchen table, or cooking something, you know, put an apron on like you're making food with nothing else underneath it. Or you could be in like a full raincoat, sweatsuit, garbage bag. It makes no difference. You can be wherever you want and take a great boudoir photo. But some things to consider. What is around you? If you have tons of bright lights, a lot of bright colors, things that will be distracting in the photo, you want to avoid that. So wherever you end up going, make sure the background is not brighter than you and is not full of distracting colors, shapes, and patterns. The background is also cool because you can interact with it. If you're in the bedroom, in bed, you can totally play around with the sheets. If you're in the shower, you can use the shower curtain as a prop. If you're in the kitchen, you know, hold a cookie sheet in front of you or pots and pans. There's a ton of stuff that you can do. If you're on the couch, have a pillow or a blanket or a book. There are a ton of things you can interact with based on your setting. So choose wisely or just shoot them all because it's tons of fun. All right, number two, choosing the right outfit. Again, there is no dress code. You can wear whatever you want or whatever you don't want. It's a mindset. So you can do sexy photos in anything, right? Trench coat, everyone's like, that person's totally naked underneath that trench coat, but you're totally covered. So imagination is a powerful tool when choosing what to wear. But I'd say the most important thing is how does it fit you? If it's too small, we get the muffin top. No one likes the muffin top. If it's too big, then things will like fall out. It, it won't sit right either. So it's better to have something that fits properly and adds structure than things that are loose and baggy or way too tight that will pinch and cause bulging. So consider that as well. Okay, number three, getting the right light. There are different things to look out for in your home when you are taking a boudoir selfie. Hard overhead light will create shadows in your eyes and that's not very flattering. So it's best to find a big window and then stand in front of the window. I have lights around me right now. You could totally go to any camera store, get on Amazon, and you can buy a cheap video lighting kit for like 50 bucks, $75. And then you can take these great photos anywhere because you have lights all over your home now. You just plug them in, move them around with you. If you don't wanna buy lights, totally cool. Find a window, face the window. If your back is to the window, and again, your background is brighter than the front of you, you're gonna be a silhouette. Or if you brighten up your own image, it's gonna make the background even brighter, and then it'll be so distracting you won't even see what's happening on you, which is the point of the photo, is to show you. So having lights are great, but either way, if you can face a window, that's ideal. Do not stand under the overhead lights on your ceiling. That's another really big step. And what you can do to find good lighting, if you're not quite sure, just put your phone on camera mode so it faces you and just look at yourself. See where the shadows go and walk around turning until you find something 
that looks flattering that doesn't create shadowy raccoon eyes and take your photo there. The last thing is nailing the perfect pose. So if you don't have a professional photographer to help you do this, here are some tips to improve the images yourself. You don't just have to do the overhead selfie shot. Instead, you can prop your camera up on a table or a chair or literally anywhere. Even if you don't have a fancy tripod or a not fancy tripod, prop your camera up on something and take different angles. You could be, you know, looking up toward yourself and put your camera on a timer so that you don't actually have to be holding it. Then that frees up your arms to do any number of things. For example, you could hook both thumbs into the waistband of your undies looking down this way. You can't do that if you're holding your phone out in front of you. But something that simple, right? Turn sideways to the camera. Always bend the leg. If I lifted my leg up high enough, you can see I'm still wearing pajama pants to film this video. Fun fact about today, bend the leg closest to the camera because when you leave the leg closest to the camera straight and you bend the other one, you'll look like a flamingo. If uh, your partner's into flamingos, great, but usually we wanna go the other way. And then your hands, again, hook both thumbs into the waistband of your undies. You can push the one closer to the camera down a little bit lower and then look down your shoulder. Look at the camera, look the other direction. And that's gonna create curves and lines and mystery and gives you something to do with your hands. Or you can just hold a sheet up in front of you. If you're laying down, you can prop the camera on a shelf and look down at yourself, covering yourself strategically with a sheet. Or even just laying down down, totally straight on the pillow, kick one leg out to the side, that's gonna create curves and shapes. But your camera angle is really important because you can do it up high, you can do it down low, you can do it at eye level, you can put it on the bed and just get like side shots. So many things that you can do with it, but just don't feel limited to keeping the camera in your hand because then you can only do a handful of poses with that. So play around with it, stretching things out and put your camera in different positions. So there you go. Four tips on how to take better boudoir selfies. Pick the right setting, pick the right outfit, find some good light, and nail the pose. If you wanna know more about posing and lighting and photography for yourself, then I have a ton of great videos on here or head to boudoirguild.com where I walk you step-by-step step through how to do all of these things. And if you wanna choose an, a photographer to do a shoot for you, I've got another great video called How to Find a Photographer. So you are amazing. I'll see you inside.